Okay, sure. Oh, so we shall start. Hey, how, can you hear clearly? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, I can hear. I can hear. Thank you. All right, so today we're going to continue with the Taishan Gan Yin Pian on the part 14. Um, you know, part 14 is about crew, I mean, being cruel and petty. That means una unable to become uh, empathized with others, unable to let go of little grievances and, you know, stuck in that and then, you know, um, escalating way beyond when it's necessary. Or petty can mean like, you know, not generous enough, not um, open hearted enough because, you know, lack of understanding, you know, why would one want to be so narrow when they have a chance to be so open and so, you know, loving. It's very, um, there's a reason behind this, you know, upbringings, the um, misconceptions, you know, if I do this, I will lose everything, you know, what is everything? What does everything mean? This is something we need to put ourselves in our own a microscope and you know, in, inspect ourselves really clearly. I can, hopefully I can use my real life case as well to help drive the point home, right? If I have no other stories to tell. <laughs> So cruel and petty, we have already been through a few sentences and I would say those are quite straightforward, you know, doing uh, once you give, you don't take it back, you know, do not regret what you give. Uh, and so what you ask for, you should not, um, how to say, put too much effort in asking for something um, that is beyond your means and rather focus inwards and uh, cultivate the merits that will attract these wishes that you've been dreaming for. So those things cannot come, uh, does not come without merits, without good character. If I use merits, it sounds like something you can just write down and earn like nine to five. But in fact, it's not. It's something of your character, you know, your essence. And how do you make it better? How do you better yourself? How do you be a better person? How do you be a nicer coworker, nicer um, colleagues, nicer uh, friends, nicer children, nicer parents, nicer boss, you know, those are what, uh, what should be the focus of our life. Because if you do that right, you do this one thing right, you know, your attitude is in the right place and with right patience because nothing goes your way. Um, nothing, not everything will go in your way and you need to have the right amount of patience, right amount of um, just be patient, able to be, you know, understanding from where this, this person came from, um, able to take it, you know, maybe some criticisms, harsh or not harsh, stuff like that. Then what you ask for will naturally come to you because you have that quality. You're able to overcome the hurdles and it does not trouble you anymore. Right? Also be kind and compassionate, right? A good person will not push his subordinate to the breaking point unless necessary, unless it's very urgent and it's very bad. Everyone would understand if you put it in the right way, right? Um, a selfish person would always think about themselves and you know use power, use coercion, use intimidation, use you know um, bribery, use seduction to lure people into it, you know, against their wishes or against their better understanding, better knowledge. So these are. These are these are how how to say this. This is the um, essence of so, uh, uh, one's character, um, how it affects other people, and the result, the consequences is, you know, if you want to get where you want, you, know, you want to seek, you want to fulfill ambition. You need a lot of people in helping you. You need the right kind of people to help you. To to have that right kind of people to help you, you gotta be the right kind of person, the right material for the job. And if you do not correct yourself you align yourself properly, you get caught up in petty matters, you get too cruel, like the topic is, you get unable to, cruel means absence of compassion, absence of love, absence of, you know, humanities, but absence of able to, to understand where this person came from, maybe he has this issue and stuff like that. In the absence of this, you know, um, one cannot have a long lasting ambition, career, or relationships, right? Anything else that you wish for, a good relationship, a good career, a good um, even cultivation, spiritual cultivation is also important. Um, that's pretty obvious. So this one I use a lot of time to talk about because this is something we 
have been quite um, see, uh, indulgent of nowadays. It's something we can do in at home without even anyone else. You know, the sexual misconduct. And um, why is this under the category cruel and petty? Because it's something that you, the energy could have been used for something greater. You know, you could have spent your energy focused on building up your, your career, building up your relationships, but instead you overindulge in this. And, you know, the excitement is there, but after the excitement, you know, the, the problem comes. You know, the price, comes the price tag of it, which is your body, you know. And that's cruel to yourself, that's cruel to your family, that's cruel to your wives and husband, that's cruel to your friends, you know. So you could have spent more time, you know, quality time with them, you know, deepen and deepening the relationship and the bonds. And sexual desire um, in this context is not, we're not talking about being monk here, we're talking about moderation, we're talking about you know, as especially as young people, right? Um, it, in this society nowadays, it's very hard to say, oh, you should not have wedlock and stuff like that. And as a Buddhist, and, you know, from the point of view, we still need to hold that stance that, you know, marriage um, is, the founda- is the foundation before we go and go ahead with this kind of desires. Uh, it's a very casual thing nowadays. However, you know, just because the rest of the world thinking that drain water is tasty does not mean drain water is tasty. You know, it's it's dirty. It's dirty. Dirty is dirty. And um, you know, we are also polluted as as well. Doesn't mean that we should allow ourselves to fall any further. Uh, everyone has different levels of um, pollution in that, and it's fine. But as long as you are aware, this is not something we should put our priority on you know because we're all adults right now we learn to prioritize things and we learn to you know manage our emotions properly if not then we find some uh, help assistance uh, or some activities you know like engage in your favorite pastime rather than wasting our life away in you know prostitutions in um, you know over casual hookups stuff like that and that ruins our um, understanding of what a proper um, you know, marriage and relationship should be, you know. So that is something I, I can go deeper because this is something that relates to us, right? Like being casual might sound like oh, it's cool and chic and modern, just just because it's like that, like a like a how to say fast fashion or stuff like that. Those are wasteful thing. Or oh, suddenly it's it's so hot to do this, does not mean it's right, All right? Just because you have one hundred friends who think it's okay, does not mean it's right. Um, what really matters is to have a proper engage, you know, relationships and, you know, in, in depth, understanding one another and actually, you know, really care for one another. And, you know, why is marriage a thing? Well, there's a lot of question. Why do I even need marriage to do this, right? Back in the days, people still have that traditions and concepts, West and East. They were like, you know, no wedlock and being, breaking a wedlock is a huge problem course right now we can't use this kind of narrative to talk to anyone it's just not working so what we can do is rationally take it out put it in front of everyone for, for everyone to judge for themselves no one's gonna enforce it on you so what we can do from a point of view in buddhism is it's all about cause and effect and of course if you want your um, family to be happy to be stable to be a peace of mind rather than keep worrying whether when my boyfriend girlfriend will cheat on me you know this is some <laughs> something you know we've seen in social media and, and those those things you know those uh, rubbish uh, media that keeps posting which I'm guilty of uh, reading a lot as well like you know just swiping the YouTube shots and all that sometimes they keep saying that you know oh cheat on me uh, you know I'm worried about that so that why would one have that concept before they even went into a serious relationship? Or oh, this person might you know, already have a few lovers. So this is because unrestrained sexual desire. You know, just because I like it, just because my body wants it, so I should do it. But we forgot we are the drivers, not the car. The car drives to where we want, right? And just because you can do it does not mean you should, because you have a choice. Do you want a long-lasting, satisfying relationship? 
including satisfying sexual conduct. Or you want something that is quick, fast, amazing, but after that it gets depressing. It gets to nowhere. And then you start doubting about, you know, is there even having, is there such thing as happiness in the family, right? Because it's because it was done, the priority was wrong. Put the cart before the horse. You know, you jump straight into that act. And then you come back and say, oh yeah, I tested the goods. I don't think I like it. So if you use that as a basis, of course it's not going to work. How can you compare a 20 years old to a 50 years old in this, right? In terms of stamina and all that. I'm, I'm just going down straight into that, right? That is not the basis of a solid relationship. You should build on understanding how much you know each other, how much you can stand each other, right? And how much you can stand each other, right? Because <laughs> you're, you're not married. So how much you can, you know, despite each other's temperament, still able to move on with that, you know, and carry it forward the life, you know. I'm talking about very now and present kind of thing. Only then you talk about, oh yeah, well, let's move out and let's let's do more, you know, because body is just an expression of your thought. You know, we all say that all phenomena arises from our heart. If your heart is pure and kind, you will look kind and pure and beautiful and, and, and calm. You know, you, you will beautiful not as in like hot or anything, it's as in your heart gives that gives people a sense of ease please. Like they, they feel calm and peace around you and you feel calm and peace around others. That kind of people will attract the right kind of people to them. They will attract someone else who is calm peacefully in one period, nineteen thirties, and there is a lay Buddhist coming to him, a man, he say that, you know, I have this um you know, sickness and all that, I'm feeling weak and all that. And then Master Ying Guang tell him that, yeah, beyond just chanting Amitabha for you, also need to s reduce your your um, frequency in sexual conduct with your wife because um, you're already sick. You know, you need to take care of yourself, take care of your body. And then he didn't listen. When we go back, I think he, 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 he do it again. But next time when he came to him, his whole face was pale and all that. It's literally lack of energy. So Master Ying Guang does not, because as a monk, it's something you can't just open up and say, don't do that. And he felt a bit awkward saying that. So he just hinted him that, you know, everything with moderation, you know, everything with moderation, right? It's like an adult talking to an adult. So unfortunately he didn't listen and he went back and keep doing that despite he has, he just recovered from his illness. So not long after he received an obituary news, Master Ying Wan received an obituary letter of this um, late uh, lay Buddhist that is very good, helping a lot in temple, donate a lot, uh, you know, giving out a lot of contribution. But he passed away early because he can't control his desire, um, even though he's sick. So Master Ying Wan's like, ah. If only I knew he would end up like this, I would have told him directly, you know, just stop for a moment, calm down, you know, wait till you are fully recovered, back to normal, then you continue. You don't have to stop it altogether because he's lay Buddhist and he's married. So this is what we're trying to say, everything in moderation and timing, right timing, right? Um, yeah, I don't want to go too much into it. That's it. Um, to hide cruelty and malice under a facade of kindness. Yeah, occult practices. Yeah. So this is something uh, we also mentioned uh, being um, two-faced, um, hiding fact from other people and cutting, you know, authentic material from either food or constructions or anything you do, um, half-hearted. It also means that, you know, trying to get things passed through without due diligence and, you know, properly examined. And this caused uh, uh, harm to the public good. You know, a lot of people were affected by your um, subpar services, subpar um, or fake, fake kindness. You know, those are two phase. And also the last one is lead people with I evil ideas and occult practices. That means they cover up with, in the name of God, in the name of Buddha, in the name of, you know, those sages, they use, you know, those ideas that was borrowed from this 
major religions that proven to be um, working and they put it in their own recipe and it was guided by desire for influence, power, fame, money, you know, or just, yeah, power, you know, just trying to having a sense of power over other people or lust or desires. Anything that is not pure and that is not genuine, right? That's what we call a cult. You know, they might appear the same as proper Buddhist practice, but they are not genuine. Or they might appear as the proper you know, Christian or Muslim, but they are not genuine uh, in their pursuit. They are not genuinely trying to better others. Maybe they do, but they are, how to say, mixing a little bit you know, of their own ideas that is not enlightened point of view, or that is not fully enlightened into this, all right? And then they will come and confuse you and all that, giving you all sorts of wordings, jargons, and stuff like that. This is this is very common, you know, especially when you just started looking for something like this and you know spirituality, trying to better yourself, and then end up joining a cult, you know, using health, using you know, you know, fitness, using. Um, very modern and hot, fashionable ideas, fitness, using the, um, um, you know, family values, all these things to cover up what it is. And they won't show you straight away. So this is why we need to learn how to, you know, discern what is right, what is wrong, what is real, what is fake, what is actual, what is apparent, that means what is on the surface, what is not. Um, and this needs sutra, you know, the proven record of sutra. You know, the best way to understand if this sutra works or not is to see how many people who actually read it and attain enlightenment. And they attain enlightenment by the way we know it is their behaviors. You know, in face of dangers, in face of actual serious problems, they are un unfettered, they are unmoved, unwavered, right? Like Master Hui Neng, Liu Zhu Hui Neng. Right, um, the sixth portrait of Zen Buddhism, you know, able to be so patient even after he was passed as the sixth patriarch of the Zen, because his background as a uneducated people in the world and in the perspective of the worldly understanding, you know, you need to read this. The you need to be able to write uh, if if you want to be considered as intellectual, and then you need to have seniorities in the rank. Those are the common sense, but. For him, he's talented and he's already attained enlightenment before that. Um, he just need a little bit push to go 100% and he did. So what happened right now is um, he hides from the rest of the temple for 15 years before he managed to find the right time to come back. 15 years, mate. 15 years on the run. Right? And it's not something anyone can be patient of. 15 years. And what makes him so steady on this? You know, he's no longer driven by desires, no longer driven by, you know, lust, no longer driven by power, fame. Only people with real quality. That means they truly want to better the world, better themselves. They are not even attached to the idea I'm bettering the world. They're just very practical person. If someone say I'm bettering the world, and then they still cannot figure themselves out. In this case, right? So how can you how can you how can how can you believe and then trust this person? This person must be already in there in that state, and what he do naturally betters the world. you know, it's, it's a natural thing. It just happens. Whatever he did or whatever she did, it just helps the world. He has that direction. He has that vow, but he's not showy. He does not. He does not need to show it. There are times where it, like Buddha always, you know, sometimes release a lot of light in the sutra. Sometimes he, you know, do some gesture like you know, taking out the flowers, and then Mahakasyapa was smiling at him. Those gestures are, everything is very zen. Like it's just at the moment. There's no planning. There's no scheduling. I'm talking about this. You know, I'm talking about those very pure moment, moment to moment connections. The highest thing, the closest thing we can describe is like.